Greetings and salutation. I am Crom the Pale and this is my 2024 7 Days Alpha 21 Base Guide. I'm going to take a slightly different approach in this video. Instead of showing you a base and explaining how to build it, what I would like to get into is why you need a base, what criteria to look for uh, before you pick a base, and all the different options that are available to you. Uh, right off the top, let me say there's no bad or wrong way to play this game. Anything you find to do is valid. You might need to talk to your friends if playing a multiplayer just to ensure that everyone's on the same page regarding to your personal play styles and game settings. But as long as there are no large conflicts, anything you all agree to will work. Your fun is not wrong. Uh, so why do you need a base? The short answer is you don't. Uh, quite a few players have tried out a nomadic style of playing. The rules to that are all self-imposed, so there's no real game settings you need to change. The basic rule is you can't spend two nights in the same location, whether it's a POI or a custom-made base. Uh, other rules adopted to suit each player, such as a no trader run or a limited trader run where you can sell items to them, but you can't do quests. You might be able to purchase from them or you might be restricted to just using the vending machines. Anything you want to do works. Um, but if you find that playing 7 Days Vanilla is a little stale and you're not ready to jump into modding, then Nomadic Style is a good option. When it does come to actual bases, you have two main options. Either you pick an existing POI to stay in, or you build a custom base from scratch. This video is primarily focused on POIs as bases. That's point of interest. These are the existing buildings you find throughout the game. So what do you look for when picking a POI for the base? Are some POIs that are better as bases or easier to convert or modify into a base? Uh, first let's look at how new players will start and then move on to more experienced options. So. We've completed our introductory quest and we've arrived at the trader. And this particular trader is Rekt, who I can't go and speak to because he'll say something nasty and I don't want anything nasty on video. So, um, oh, I should mention too, for everything in this video, I'm assuming you're using a random generated world and not the included Navis game map. That means the POIs next to the trader will be completely random. Uh, there are a few highly common options that most every map will have. There's a chance your random map won't have any of these. You can even have a trader that'll spawn like right out in a highway area with no city, you know, within 500 meters. Generally speaking, you're going to want to find a trader next to a city to play, but it's not 100% required. Again, whatever you find enjoyable, go with. Uh, so, day one, you've got to the trader and you need to pick a base. What do you do? Well, there's two big options you can go with. You can pick whatever uh, building is nearby your trader or you can do a tier one quest and of those quests he has obviously buried supplies is not what i would suggest but if you have a clear quest or a fetch plus clear then you can clear a poi and that will give you uh the quest rewards plus you'll know for a fact that you've killed all of the zombies in that poi now if it's just a fetch you can complete the quest by finding the supplies but you won't have to kill all of the zombies so be aware if you're doing a fetch quest for a POI that you may have to do further exploring to ensure that you've killed all the, you know, all the zombies before you claim it as your base. That being said, nearby POIs usually fall into one of three options. You've got the farms, residential houses, and small businesses. When it comes to farms, there's quite a number of options. Uh, most have both barns and houses. Some only consist of houses, but those are pretty rare. Um, there's upsides and downsides to it. One upside is that they're made of wood. So it's not hard for you to change things, customize them, and suit them to suit your particular needs. The downside is they're made of wood, so they can be easily destroyed by zombies, and they're not exactly the safest. But once you complete your quest, you've got to decide, do I want to make the ground floor my base 
or do I want to go upstairs? My advice, go upstairs. Uh, for safety's sake, getting off the ground is always best, and a couple well-placed destroyed blocks, and I'll take out a couple more here just to satisfy my own sense of taste, and you can easily jump up and you're into the second floor. The second floor you'll find is fairly safe. You may need to place the odd block. You'll obviously want to destroy things to make it more suitable. You might want to knock out a wall or two and give yourself a big room to work with. Obviously I'm using a dev tool so I'm going to break the floor whenever I can shoot stuff. And this particular house has some breakaway floors that you're going to want to replace, but all in all, you can create a fairly reasonable sized base in here. Now, when it comes to houses, they of course come in every size and shape. Some of them are tier ones, some of them are tier fives. So obviously, if it's near the trader, you would hope it was a tier one, but they could be tier fives. This particular house is tier one. You can tell by up in the right hand corner, you see it says Bullis Bates Estate and it has that little red skull. That tells me it's a tier one. If there were two skulls, tier two, three is tier three and so forth. So obviously with a working garage door, you've got yourself a great garage for vehicles late game. And if I run through this and get in, I've got uh, access to the house. You probably would want to fill that in. If you did this as a quest and wanted to get out and hit the button, this will open this door. The problem is, once it's opened, you cannot close it. However, as bases go, this isn't too bad. It's a little bit stronger than the uh, farmhouse, but it does have some weak entry points that you'll have to take care of. It doesn't have an upstairs. However, what it does have is a roof. And if we go up here, we can access the roof. And in this case, this roof actually has an attic. So you could make this attic your base. Day one, this would make for a fantastic base, in my opinion. You could easily get up there and be safe throughout the night. And of course, the other option are small businesses. Of the small businesses, the ones I like that are almost always relatively close to the uh, trader are the passing gas stores. Now passing gas is kind of a mixed bag. They're fantastic because you can get loot like vending machines that are working. You can also find uh, a lot of food items in there. There's a chance if it has a bathroom that it'll have a toilet which can give you a uh, chance at least at a uh, toilet pistol or toilet knife. Both of those are very good. There's a lot of area back in here. It's a wooden fence, so it's not entirely protected. However, this place has a ladder to the roof, which is the only access. So if I destroy the ladder, I can still jump up. Zombies will not be able to jump up. It's not they can't jump, it's that they don't recognize that that ladder is a path because it doesn't go down far enough. And the roof here, because it's not made of half slabs, is buildable. Some roofs are not buildable, or rather they have half slabs on them, like the lip here, which means if you were to place a block on top of it, it would wind up floating. And that can make for really ugly looking bases, but they do work for bases. I personally like passing gases, and I think they make a great option. But again, there are many different small businesses that would work and suit the same. Now, okay, so you've made your base, you've hunkered down, you're good for the night. What about seven days in, 14 days in, 21 days in? You've had your base for a while now, you've got it built up, but you've decided, okay, the city we're in happens to be too small. I want to move to a bigger city. So you got to move bases. That's 100% expected, and so don't worry too much about your first base. Some players overthink things, saying they have to have the very perfect base day one. You don't. Anything will do, and that'll be really obvious once I get into the next video with the custom bases. However, if you are going to move to a new city, 
you might want to look for the identical you know building to turn into a base but most players want to look for something a little bit bigger maybe a little bit better or have some other options so I'm going to take you through a couple quick uh, options that are nearby to this one and could have worked for a base here I just didn't pick them myself in this video so here's one this is called a remnant remnants are POIs that are non questable so if you look in the top right hand corner it says plating company it doesn't have a uh, skull there that means there's no quest here that does not mean there's no zombies or no loot there are both but in lower numbers the beautiful part about this is because it's a destroyed building you can repair it fairly easily and create a fairly solid large base here now some players find this daunting because there's a lot of resources involved in rebuilding this place it isn't as strong as some you know think it looks strong but 1200 is cobblestone so that's not really the strongest now another option is what we have over here and this is one of my top tier picks for uh, an early game base that you can easily renovate and turn into something useful and that's prowling Pete's it's got a very distinctive sign here which we can't see because of this nasty tree and cut the tree down so prowlin Pete's now what makes it advantageous as a base is it's got this nice little wall all around three sides bulletproof glass on the doors which are unlocked so you've got a nice way in and out now it does have ordinary glass in the windows which doesn't make a lot of sense so you may break all those windows and replace them you could remove all the chairs and tables and use this as your base or you can do what I do and look at the second floor now to make the second floor safe and by safe I just mean to make it so that zombies don't recognize it as a viable path to get to you so what I would do is I would take out those blocks right there and once again I'm gonna place a ladder you're also probably gonna want to put a claim block and then you come up here and you've got this little office door here oh a bit of a fire trap well I'm gonna turn that off oh, this door is locked so I'll have to remove it unfortunately we can't lock pick doors there are mods that allow us to do that but in vanilla seven di seven days that is not an option so if we come up here we've got this beautiful area that we can use as the base there's a hole in the roof where I like to make a sun lamp or a skylight whatever you want to refer to it as and then the roof itself here and all of this stuff it looks like it's in the way but it's actually pretty easy to remove this kind of stuff and give yourself a nice big flat area to work with there we go knew something was keeping it up oops so you can do this I used this particular base myself in a run and I ran farm plots all along up here a bunch of rows of them and then I had a uh, do collectors all lined up in the corners here and I even thought about building a tower in the back area here just so I could have a better view around the base another advantage to this particular POI is it has this second floor lip that runs all around the base making it pretty convenient if you want to like throw a door in somewhere so that you can access your uh, second floor without having to go uh, blah, blah, blah. words they're difficult there we go so I've got an easy way into the base without having to go through the ground floor so you could technically completely fill in the ground floor now some players don't like the lip because you can't see the base the wall but I don't find it that big of a deal and I'm just gonna shoot over the city here and see if I spot any other really nice multiplayer POIs so as you can see up in the air there's a lot of different uh, POIs to choose from this is a fairly large city there's another large city to the north so when it comes to choosing a base you have a lot of options especially when you're going with POIs I think this is one yeah this is another passing gas but 
it's one that the rooftop is made of half slabs. So that will be problematic for you when you start placing things like workstations. That You could still use it, but many players don't like the look of floating objects, so they would tear out this entire roof, which is doable. It's only a thousand per square, but that's a lot of work, especially for the early game. Late game, though, uh, again, the benefit to this is there's no easy access for zombies to that roof, so you'd have to create your own ladder up and down. But you could easily do that. Even on day one, you get up here. There's absolutely no way for zombies to get up here. The odds of them bringing this place down is pretty slim. These doors, 15,000. That means that the zombies not only have to break through all these 5,000 concrete blocks, but they'd have to break through these doors as well in order to bring that roof down. Now these columns are only a thousand, so this overhang is pretty easy to drop. Now when you are looking at POIs to choose for a base, there are a few things to look at too. This one is nice and open for getting vehicles in, but if you go say downtown, it's a lot more dangerous, there's a lot more zombies, but you also run into the problems of how to get in and out of the base. So, for example, you've got ones like this POI right here. It's sitting right on the main road, so you think it's really good to get in and out of, but you've got this narrow gap between two POIs here and another gap along here with another POI. So you've got this, you know, decayed office tower as a remnant. So you could pick it, you have a corner, so you have two ways to get to it, but how do I get to the trader from here? If I'm driving, well, I've got a blocked road here. I can go all the way down here, I guess. These are things to consider when picking a base. They shouldn't make or break you, but they are things to think of. You know, how long of a trip is it? Do I have a vehicle? Is there objects blocking the roadway? That could be a, you know, uh, object for you, objective for you to clearing out all the pathways. But, uh, that's about everything I wanted to talk about in this particular video. Uh, my next video I'm going to do all about building a base from scratch. So I hope this was somewhat helpful to you and uh, have a great day. Keep on surviving!